Martin Ahmad Cleves, born September 7th, 1977. When I think of Mateen Cleves, I remember my general thoughts about what he brought to the game. If there was a better leader in college basketball, then I must have missed it. Because this guy had all the intangibles needed to become a great leader, not just on the floor, but in life as well. How do we examine what his life has turned out to be, whether positive or negative? Do we judge him on the fact that he's just a man, a person that's going to make mistakes from time to time? You can't live everyone's life and be a puppet to their expectations of you. What you turn out as is a product of the desires of your heart, work, and beliefs. Or do we look at him as the all-American point guard that went on to star at a popular program, win a national championship, was drafted as a lottery pick, and had every opportunity to live out millions of Hooper's dreams? What happens when the puppet falls off the string, so to speak? Does the show stop? Nope. The puppet master's fired, and they find a new doll. Mateen Cleves didn't become what many thought he would, on and off the floor. Maybe not. He did it his way and is the only person that can judge his journey as a failure or success. We can only assume. With that said, here's my assumptions on the three biggest stunts in his career that stopped him from putting on the show many expected. It's your boy JC Stunning Growth. Let's get it, man. Stunt number one, Illusions. Mateen Cleves was obviously an impactful basketball player in the grand scheme, but not all impactful or entertaining players make it to the level of the NBA, and if they do, not all have success and make it a long career. What amateur sports does more times than needed is create a false perception of a player that can inflate what your eyes actually see. Now more than ever, because everyone has access and tools to make them whatever they want to be, it's hard to decipher who's real and who's not. You look at a guy's YouTube or rankings and you think, Man, this guy's a number one pig, no doubt. I'll, I'll internet kill you if you don't agree. No, no, this guy is God. I'm buying all his sneakers and merch because he got swag and everyone counts him out. But I watch him on YouTube every day and I know he's real even though I never played a day in my life. Shut your bitch ass! Because my days is a mess. We'll see. But in Cleve's days, it was all about what the news wrote about you, or what schools recruited you, and what coaches came to your games, the word on the street about you. Either error, the perception, if created falsely, can send a player crashing into, man, what happened to him status? It's what I think happened to Cleves. I'm not saying he wasn't good, just not as good as his illusion made him seem to be. He was one of the top ranked point guards entering college. His early physical and athletic development made him look really good against his high school peers and in college. He fell into the perfect situation for him to flourish. Going to the right school or college can do wonders for a player. And I think the team was the perfect example of that. Was he good? He was I. Right, he was I. Right. But I never felt as a basketball player, he would be as big as announcers on TV, sports media, and his loud personality made him out to be. It was actually not very difficult to look at his game and notice many deficiencies he'd have at the next level. But because college is a lot different than the NBA in that if you're in the right program, you can look however you want. But his actual skills just couldn't compare to those illusions. No disrespect, man. Stunt number two, shooting and size. Although a part of Mateen Cleves' law was his football player size and strength, that size and strength did make up for him being a bit slow on both ends of the floor and not long enough to make him a good defender on the highest level. He's listed at 6'2", but I think he's closer to 5'11", 6 foot than that. After a long battle on which hometown school to attend, the Flint, Michigan product chose to attend State in order to create his own path outside of the shadows of the Fab Five. His future teammates Morris Peterson and Antonio Smith were also very influential and by some reports jokingly forced him to join them. He entered as a freshman and averaged 10 points and 5 assists per game. He hit the ground running and was a beast point guard for the remainder of his career as far as leadership, passion, and personality. And like my last feature Ed Coda, although not as good or flashy, he was a real good passer with career college averages of 6.6. .6. 
As a sophomore, he stepped into a bigger role and led his team in scoring and assists, was the Big Ten Player of the Year, an award he would win a second time within his four years. He averaged 16 points and 7 assists per game that year also. As a junior, his stats fell off a bit, but was able to take his team to the Final Four again, but eventually lost to Duke. In his senior season, his shooting was a lot better than in his first three, where he shot the ball respectfully at 37% but it still didn't erase the obvious facts that when you watch him shoot, you could see that he would struggle in the NBA with a deeper three-point line and more pressure. After winning the national championship that year, he was drafted 14th in the 2000 NBA draft. Stunt number three, living up to expectations. I don't want to make this entirely about Mateen Cleaves as a basketball player because he also had expectations to not only be a great player but an important figure in basketball post his playing career as well. His personality was probably his biggest asset. Yeah, he did put on more than a few times but for the most part he was a joy to watch perform. It was like he was on a stage every night. I at least thought he'd become a coach and be pretty successful in that endeavor. But see, that's the thing about Mateen's story. Because of the bar he set, everyone had their visions of what his life should have amounted to. Drafted by the Detroit Pistons, he was expected to come in and bring that same leadership, passion, and winning to his hometown team. He'd play 78 games at 16 minutes per game. Sadly, he didn't see the success the team thought he should have had. He shot the ball poorly, not just that season, but over the course of his career at 26% from three, 72% from the free throw line, and averaged five points a game, and just 2.7 assists per game. Sometimes, I think these front office guys are just drafting for name, man. Actually, most times. He lasted just one season in Detroit, two with Sacramento and Seattle, and one with Cleveland, where he never averaged more than five points a game. After averaging two assists his rookie year, that stat, which was his best asset, fell into the zeros. Simply put, I just don't think his skill set was built for the NBA, no matter what expectations put on him. He'd leave for a career overseas and D-League. And then, there's the expectations of him at least becoming the person people thought he'd be. In 2015, he was caught in a bizarre video taped naked trying to snatch a blonde back to his room. The female accused him of rape in which he was acquitted, stating it was consensual and he was simply protecting the inebriated girl from walking into the street with no clothing. Good lawyers, I see. Because of his acquittal, I won't speak on that further. All in all, a great college basketball player, but not so good NBA player that is still respected in basketball and still has a chance to be at least some things people expected of him. It's your boy JC, Stunner Growth, and I'm out.